and try it for free like iron. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work in silver, it works for iron. Okay, do I need that? I don't need it. I think it will be fine. So thanks everyone for arriving. Uh, I'm Asaf Glazo, uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Nanit. And uh, I'll take the next uh, half an hour or so uh, to talk about Nanit and tell you more about um, the company. So you want me to use a microphone? Yeah, let's do it. Do you hear me better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. So uh, a few words about my background. Um, in the last 15 years or so, I've been working on how to make cameras smart. Uh, I made my PhD at the Technion, uh, Israel Institute of Technology and Field of uh, Machine Learning, Computer Vision, uh, postdoc at Cornell University. Uh, I used to work at uh, Applied Materials. Uh, for a couple of years, we developed their uh, camera that's suitable to silicon slices to tell you what kind of defect you're looking at. Uh, also using machine learning and computer vision, the two algorithm guys that uh, build this product, uh, sold it to Toshiba here in Nagoya. Um, and uh, before this, I used to work in a private company dealing with uh, missile defense on artificial intelligence stuff. Uh, I'm major in reserve from uh, the Israeli Air Force. So I, I was trained to be a pilot, and then moved to deal with deep technology uh, of missile defense. And, but everything changed during my PhD when I became a parent. And this is, this is my story today. So um, actually it was a few years ago with my first kid, Simpson I had my second kid, and now I'm expecting my third kid, okay? Uh, but it was a very exciting time. You know, you are expecting a kid, and, uh, and you are curious, learning about it. And uh, like many parents, I went to find a baby monitor camera. Now I understand that here in Japan you do not usually buy a baby monitor camera. The kid is sit next to you, and um, it is a bit different in the U.S. Seventy percent of the uh, families has a baby monitor camera, and. Uh, like 90% of the kids are sleeping in a crib until age two or three. So the use case is a bit different. Um, but um, when I went to look for a camera, I found that actually none of the existing products on the market are, are, are good, they are pretty crap. Like if you look at how they look, the experience and, and so on. And after building $10 million cameras that look at silicon wafer, uh, you look at the technology out there, and you say that parents deserve more. And so um, I'm a camera guy, so I bought this camera and put it above my crib. It was on an, an ID pole that, uh, um, that I uh, uh, got from uh, my father realized that he's a vet. So I cleaned it up. Uh, I use it and put it above the crib, uh, looking at it from a uh, bird eye view position. Um, and and I, I started to talk about the existing product. Like the existing product is pretty crap, uh, not reliable, not secure. And uh, you look at them, they look like, like a cheap plastic and, and they offer very poor user experience and parents deserve more. So, so the question is, uh, it's a the design question. Okay, what, what actually parents want. So parents want to know if their baby is safe, they want to know if their baby is sleep normal, they want to know if the baby develops normal, uh, am I doing it right? It's important to understand that everything started from curiosity. And I wasn't that afraid if my kid like I was afraid, like all parents, but I, I didn't use the camera to see if the kid is breathing or not. 
I use it in an offline manner during the day to know how to make the tomorrow better and help me to make decisions around my kid. Uh, so let me show you a short video about um, uh, Nanit is now available for you can purchase Nanit on the website we're shipping it in a month from now um, and I will show you the campaign that um, uh, the video campaign that uh, we're on it so okay so let's say this just happened or your baby's arriving any minute now like a freight train of love and lost sleep and, well, advice. Your sister-in-law, books, a lot of books. The postman, they mean well, but somehow all the advice, the gadgets, this weird toy, it can leave you with a lot more questions than answers. And that, my sleepy friends, is why we invented this good thing. We call it Nanny. Part baby monitor, part baby translator, part sleep guru, Nanit is the most advanced baby monitor ever. That's because Nanit's camera uses a thing called computer vision. Nanit learns how your baby moves and tells you if they're fussy, awake, or sleeping like a dream. But look at that, Lily just woke up. Nanit tracks and understands sleep patterns, parent visits, room conditions, and much more. And the app helps you identify sleep issues and start scoring little sleep victories. And check this out. Every morning, Nana delivers last night's highlight reel, plus a sleep score, so you can see improvements right before your eyes. We did all this and more to bring happy days and restful nights to your whole family. Introducing Nana. Biggest thing that happened to the baby monitor since the baby monitor. So uh, this is Nanit. Nanit is actually the next generation of baby monitor camera. It is the first consumer camera on the market that classify behavior. Um, existing cameras that you know today. And they tell you about motion, moving pixels. Uh, we actually understand the scene, uh, and we are doing it in a high precision. Um, and it, we are the first in the market uh, to use this technology. Um, we decided to concentrate on sleep. Uh, sleep is. Uh, I just met this morning uh, a guy who's uh, you know, the, the head of the, one of the hospitals here, and he talked with me about sleep in kids in Japan. Uh, sleep uh, in general, you know, it's a big issue for parents. Parents on average lost around 44 days of sleep in the first year of parenting. Uh, three out of 10 kids um, reported to have a sleep disorder. The statistics are higher, by the way, in Japan. Um, and uh, all parents are dealing with the challenge of putting their baby to sleep. Uh, so we found it as a deep cause. Um, we were very uh, scientific in our, we are very scientific in our approach of how we measure sleep and try to encourage behavioral change to improve sleep. Um, one of the first things that I have made um, when I understand that you know, this is something that we should concentrate about is I know machine learning, computer vision. I don't know much about sleep science. You know, I know it's entertainment to drive, uh, but so I went to a sleeping lab and sat with the technical guys there and we were looking at videos together and one rule in computer vision is first try to understand if you can classify it with your eyes. Like if you're looking at a kid, can you tell if he's asleep or awake based on the patterns that you're looking at? And I immediately saw the opportunity and uh, how they are doing it and uh, Actually, all parents can have a sleeping lab in their home. Um, so we collaborated with uh, researchers internally as an advisor, um, like, um, okay, I, I would say that um, I applied, when I was about to finish my PhD, I knew that I'm going to do the start, okay? So the question is whether from Israel, I was in Israel at this time, I finished my PhD, whether I can do it from there. 
and my consumers were in the U.S. So my first decision was to move my family to the U.S. And because it is hard to understand the consumer without living their life. And so this was the first thing. Second thing, um, after looking at, you know, tapping into sleep science, I understand that uh, we need the, the science part inside of the DNA of, of this venture. And so I applied for a program called the Runway Program, part of Cornell Tech University, Cornell Tech and Technion. I actually moved as a postdoc to Cornell University. And the idea is to commercialize, sorry, to commercialize science. So it was a, 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 a program at uh, New York, and we set up a Google building in, in New York City um, for two years. And uh, I think it is one of the key for our success, the, the environment there, and that, uh, for instance, the president of the Technion first, so he is a world expert in sleep. He had sleeping labs all over the US. And he has his own company with a device that helps to diagnose the issues around sleep. So he helped me a lot along the way, and I couldn't have it without my background at the Technion and uh, uh, this uh, postdoc uh, program. And he connected me to one of his, um, uh, he said that he's number one postdoc that he had, uh, Avi Sadeh. Avi Sadeh is working with us, he is um, uh, one of our advisors. Uh, he invented the gold standard of how to measure sleep for kids, and, and this is where science comes into place, and the intersection of technology is always something amazing that can happen, and uh, we invented uh, many, and we can say that uh, preliminary experiments that we have, we have done show that we are performing the state of the art of how to measure sleep, and we are now conducting the research study with Tel Aviv University to show that we really uh, peer review, uh, to show that we are out of home, the state of the art. So we are very methodological and scientific oriented in the way that we approach uh, problems in general. And um, so we we also working with uh, Cornell Weill with their sleeping lab, Khaviva Vela, and the director there, she's working with us. Um, and we are also uh, working on other parts of uh, wellness, I'll talk about it a bit later. Um, I, will, I would like to show you uh, a demo of the app, um, but I, I would first tell you what you're, you're going to see. So we are tracking after four scientific measures. Uh, we didn't invent those measures, but they are very simple to understand, and this is why we pick them. Uh, it's uh, sleep quality, percent of stroke time that your kid is asleep, inside the crib, uh, total sleep time, number of hours that your kid is asleep, and uh, number of visits, how many times you approach the crib and visit, visit it during the night, and uh, sleep onset, how much time it took your baby to fall asleep once you put it in the crib. <coughs> uh, we align everything with the sleep score uh, that we designed for, that we're really proud of. Uh, it's very simple and healthy to track day after day, and everything is also aligned with the time-lapse video to tell you what happened during the night in a snapshot and a dashboard. And, and, and one of the things that we understand during the design process is that parenting today is a teamwork. It's not only the mom, uh, there is the dad, and uh, sometimes the nanny, or uh, the grandma, or whatever, and they need to work as a team. And we call it the baby team. And they need to be aligned on best practices. So the insights that we generate, um, we put it together with a collaboration tool for them to share information that will allow them to, to be aligned on best, best practices and make better decisions for their kids. Um, so I, I will show you this. So. <coughs> show you a demo app, although everything is pretty 
We have around 30 uh, parents that are using today our, um, our uh, camera. So what you are seeing now is the first, first screen. Uh, first you have a welcome message. Uh, Hi dad, I fell asleep more than an hour ago. Uh, everything it is based on our computer vision algorithm that we run on the cloud. Uh, we are the first one that run that. You know, we are running computer vision algorithm on the cloud in almost real time, in an affordable way, in enough precision uh, for parents to use, uh, and, and this is pretty, pretty innovative. Um, something that we have is here a nice summary. So uh, here you can see a time lapse video showing you what happened during the night. So a lad, oops, I don't my key. Okay, a lad um, uh, was put to bed asleep. Uh, lad woke up and fell asleep after a uh, few minutes. And this is great, you know, I can tell you that my kid can put himself to sleep without help. Uh, I know it only thanks to Nanny. And one of the first stories that uh, Abby told me uh, was just about that, that they put a camera inside the, um, inside the room. And there is a method called the Ferber method. Have you heard about it? Like letting your kid to cry until he falls asleep. Um, it is not easy for parents. Um, there are parents that are still doing it. Um, and uh, it's really hard. So they put the camera and the kid and the parents who are waiting outside. And you see the kid that he doesn't want to sleep. He is standing on the crib, holding the bars, crying, you know, and the parents are waiting outside and no doubt crying as well. And the kid is taking the pacifier, he's throwing it to the other side of the room. He doesn't want to sleep. And um, it's a problem. But then you have a, another video of the same kid in the same night that he wake up during the night, the kid, taking the pacifier, give it to the teddy bear, and then put it back in his mouth and put, put himself back to sleep without help. When you show this to a parent, this is a big <coughs> change. And this is something that you can have only with men. Uh, so this is just an example. Um, all the information um, is, uh, is um, compressed in, in what we call the dashboard. Um, you have here the four measures that I talked about, the quality, percentage of time that your kid was asleep in the crib, so sleep time, number of visits, and uh, sleep onset, which is the time that took your baby to, to fall asleep. And our beta testers that are using your product today watch this screen at least once a day, all of them. Uh, and uh, uh, they are all pretty consumed the analytics that we are doing, they are using the activity. I will walk with you over things, but uh, we we already know that they prefer it much more than the existing cameras that they are actually do not use. Most of them had a camera when we are, when we arrived, and none of them is using the camera that that they originally had. And um, I told you that uh, parents need to be aligned with best practices. So here you see their notification. They can send notification one to the other. So here is an example. A lad woke up and was attended. You see that the crib is full of pacifiers. He didn't find any pacifier. And so I woke up and I gave him a bottle of water and he fell asleep. And she wrote me, darling, next time please place all the pacifier at the same corner. And this way he would be able to find the pacifier and he will know when the pacifier is located. So this is an example of how to be aligned on best practices, uh, whether to put the blanket, to put, keep the bottle inside the crib, and those kind of things that are how to prevent association sleep. And sometimes you need to have uh, um, um, to complement each other uh, as a team. So um, the last thing I would like to show you is the activity tab. It's like a Facebook feed of what happened during the last uh, like event chronologically order. Seeing that I can here, I can find the event with the pacifier and so on. 
Yes, uh, of course, by the way, you have a temperature, humidity sensor, uh, live stream, uh, we have um, a night light, and uh, this is really nice. We have on top of the camera um, a night light feature that is directed to the ceiling and not to the baby. So the parents can see what happened with the crib will not, uh, while the kid is, doesn't wake up. And, and this is a really nice thing that we're having. In general, we see, we see Nanit as a, as a system. Um, we see Nanit as a system. It has a security is a big issue that many baby monitor cameras today have. Uh, we are meeting the HIPAA requirements. Everything is encrypted. All frames are encrypted. Uh, we are going to tap into telemedicine and mobile health uh, in 2017 prepare ourselves for this uh, environment. Uh, parents today are struggling with where to put the camera. Uh, you are not supposed to put the camera less than three feet away from the crib due to strangulation hazard. Those are the standards. Uh, so we solve it with the cable management, like the way that we are bringing the camera directly to the best position for the parent to see where, where everything without putting the camera behind bars or some sort of weird, weird orientation or mounting problems that they are having. Um, we uh, design um, the mount to be blended. By the way, a lot of Japanese inspiration design in this product. Uh, all our roofs are very, uh, uh, we, we, uh, I, I cannot show you the amount of sketches, there are more than 200 sketches that we made for this product until we, we landed on this shape. Um, but we had a lot of inspiration from uh, uh, Japanese design along the process. Um, the camera is blended into the room, a pillow shape, uh, with it, with it in the height that kids at the 99 percentile won't be able to reach it if they stand in the crib. Um, we found that 30% of the parents are taking the camera with them when they travel. So the camera is actually be, can be detached from the mount and we have a movie stand that you can take the camera with you uh, when you travel. Uh, the onboarding experience is, uh, is the better than everything that you are uh, uh, that you experienced with because the standard is pretty low, so I don't know how strong this statement is. But we didn't compromise in how we, uh, the, uh, how we implemented the, the onboarding uh, part of the product. Um, internet, uh, just a small example. Like today, with existing security cameras, if there is no internet, you won't see a screen. Like it drops in the camera. This is unacceptable from the parent's perspective. We have real-time notification for some movement, so you can be in the, uh, could be a big home, maybe not here in Tokyo, okay? Uh, a big home, but, and there is, the baby is crying in the second floor, and you do not hear it, because there is no internet, and you don't know it. So uh, when you are at home, our camera will work on the, uh, on the uh, router, on the existing Wi-Fi red network directly, and do not and does not depend on, on the uh, internet. Um, so um, another example is the image sensor. We fit the image sensor to the side of the crib. Like usually, if you fit today camera that is like 16 to 9 aspect ratio, is a problem. You actually don't see what you need. <coughs> so we fit the image sensor so you would see exactly uh, what you are looking for. <coughs> so, Nanit create technology and um, uh, use computer vision to give parents two personalized insights. Um, we are, our goal is to um, improve or show behavioral change, positive behavioral change in parents. And we are.